Today's portion in Tanya, the portion for the 25th of Adar, is in the middle of chapter 37, Pedic Lamed Zayin, on page 94, or on the bottom number, page 172. We've learned until now that when a Jew does a mitzvah, the animal soul, which is necessary in the act of the mitzvah, because it is through the animal soul that the body is motivated and moved to do the mitzvah, Therefore, when the animal soul is engaged in the act of the mitzvah, the animal soul itself becomes a vehicle for godliness, a chariot for godliness, creating a dwelling place in the lower world for God, which is the ultimate purpose for which God created the world. And why is it? Why is it only through the act that this happens? Because the act of the mitzvah, which leaves out my intention and my desires and my wants, and brings me into contact with what God wants, because the act of the mitzvah is purely what God wants, there there is no concealment at all. There is nothing resisting God's revelation. Therefore, God is revealed there completely. His truth is revealed there. And what is His truth? That there is nothing besides God. And that's what creates a dwelling place for Him in the lower world, a dwelling place being a place in which you can be yourself completely without any restraints. By doing this, the Rebbe says, we create a dwelling place in the lower world, also in the physical objects with which we do the mitzvah. Now the Rebbe says that if all Jews were to do this, to create a dwelling place for God in their animal soul, thereby we can create a dwelling place for God in the entire world bringing about the coming of Mashiach and the resurrection of the dead where six lines from the bottom on page 94 and then when all the animal soul of all Jews will become a, a holy chariot for God, Azai Gam Klolus Haze, then all the life of this physical world, Shehi Klipas Nega, which comes from the same source as this animal souls of the Jew, which is Klipas Nega, Teitze Ozmitumoso, then this energy that the world lives off will be taken out of its unholiness the chalosa and from its illness the talil kedusha and it will rise up to holiness to become a chariot to God as is the animal soul of the Jews collectively when God will be revealed and all flesh together will be able to see the and and God will shine forth in his full strength and glory via Moli Kvede, Kved Hashem, as Kol Ha'aretz, and God's glory will fill the whole world, the Israel and the Jew, Yiru Ba'ayin Ba'ayin, Kibimatan Teirah. The Jews will be able to see godliness eye to eye as it was at Matan Teirah. And although non-Jews will also see, and, and godliness will be revealed for, for the entire world, but there, there will be some amount of concealment through a garment, whereas for the Jews it will be eye to eye without any garment at all, as it was at Matan Teirah. Dichsiv, concerning Matan Teirah, the giving of the Teirah, it says, Ata harei solodas ki Hashem hu alikim eneid milvadei, that Jews were able to see that there is nothing besides God, val yidei zeh, and through this, through elevating all that belongs to Klipas Neida, all that is permissible and neutral, by elevating that into godliness, where it becomes part and parcel of holiness, through this, Yisbalu v'yisbatlu legamre, it will be swallowed up and completely discontinued. Kol ha-sholish klipes 
all the unholy klipa that is completely dark, that which is not elevated, but rejected, because the way that this totally unholy klipa exists today is, in, in, is by drawing life and energy from holiness, because everything comes from holiness. But how does this totally unholy klipa get its energy from holiness? Al yedei klipas nega. It's through the neutral klipa. Hamemutzas benehen that bridges that serves as an intermediary between them. So it's through klipas nega. When the neutral klipa, the permissible, is dragged down into the unholy, then the unholiness receives its life from that. But when the klipas nega, the neutral klipa, will become absorbed permanently into holiness, then the totally unholy klipa will have no source of life and will therefore be swallowed up and, and disappear. The nimtso ki kol tach l'shel yemei samoshiach otchia samesim. So what results from all of this is that the whole fulfillment of the days of Moshiach and the resurrection of the dead which is Shahu Gilik which is the time when God will be completely revealed. His glory will be revealed to the whole world and his godliness to Jews and the totally unholy clipper should be removed and permanently discontinued. All of this is totally it all depends it all depends on the drawing down of godliness and God's light to the animal soul of all Jews. So by elevating the animal soul of all Jews and bringing godliness to the animal soul of all Jews, through this we bring about the coming of Mashiach and the resurrection. Because when godliness is brought down into the animal soul, the chol ramach evarah yidei ki yuma kol ramach mitzvah sase, to all the 248 limbs of the animal soul, so to speak, by performing the 248 positive mitzvahs, ul haviru achatuma mimeno, and removing the unholiness from it, bishmi rasa kol shasa mitzvahs leisase, and that is accomplished by keeping scrupulously the, th the 365 negative commandments by not doing them. <speaking in Hebrew> that the animal soul should not draw any life from the unholiness to its 365 arteries, so to speak, because the animal soul is also put together of 613 parts. So when all 613 parts of the animal soul are healthy, then then the collective souls of Israel, which is generally divided into 600,000 categories. It, they constitute, they, they comprise the life of the entire world. The world, too, is divided into 600,000 parts. Ki bishvilom nivra, because it's for the Jewish soul that the whole world was created, and so it's through the Jewish souls that the world gets its life. Chol prat mehem, and every detail, every individual soul, who keilil v'shayich loy chayish el chelik echad, meshishim ribe meklolos ha'ilam. Every individual soul of these 600,000 souls in, includes within itself, contains within itself the life and energy of one 600,000th part of the world, Hatoli Yunis, which depends, this part of the world depends on this particular Jew's animal soul, to elevate that part of the world to God. When it the animal soul of that particular Jew raises itself to godliness. It raises up with it that part of the world that belongs to it. The Hainu, which means specifically, that those aspects of the world, those items that the person uses to support his body and his animal soul. La Vedas Hashem, when he uses all of that in the service of God, Kagain, for example, Achila Vishtiya Vide Mehem, 
those things that are directly necessary for the body, eating and drinking and similar things, like clothing or any pleasure that a person has from the physical world, adds energy and, and life and health to his animal soul, and then he uses that vitality with to serve God with it, so he is elevating the food and the drink and the other pleasures that the body has. The dida, and also something more removed from the body, like a dwelling place, a house, the place where the person lives, the whole clay tashmisha, and all the articles within the house with which a person goes about his life. So all of those things that represent the entire physical universe, all of that gets elevated by the individual Jew whose individual animal soul is responsible for those particular parts of this physical world. But there we're talking only about 600,000 souls. How do we get to all the parts of the world? Elosh, Shishimri, Binisham, Isprotis, Elu. It's just that these 600,000 souls, Hain, Shroshim, they are roots. And every one of those roots then subdivides into 600,000 sparks, into 600,000 parts. And each one of those sparks is an individual soul. And the same is true with every part of the soul that it subdivides in all four worlds, in the worlds of Atsilas, Bri, Yitzira, and Asiya. So through all these individual specific souls, each one of these souls carries the responsibility and, and represents one aspect of the physical world when all Jewish souls are keeping mitzvahs, the positive and the negative, and thereby elevating their own animal soul, the animal soul brings up, raises up with it, also that part of the world that belongs to it. In other words, all those things in the world, all those physical objects and items that the animal soul derives pleasure from and gets life from and then uses that life and that energy in the performance of a mitzvah, all of that be, is, is raised up to God and all of it becomes a chariot for godliness. In the Hayyim Yim for the 25th of Adar Sheni, the Rebbe writes that the Chosid, the Mordechah told the following story. He said that the first statement that we heard from the Alter Rebbe when we came to Lojna was the statement that what we're permitted to do, what we're not allowed to do, we're not allowed to do. And what we're allowed to do, we don't have to do. That's what we heard. And we worked on it for three or four years to, to bring this into reality in our daily life, that what you're not allowed, you're not allowed. And what you are allowed, you don't need. And only after that, did we allow ourselves to go into Yechidus to see the Rebbe privately and ask the Rebbe for a, a method, for a path on which to serve God?